You're listening to Bluebird Broadcast. I'm your host, creator, and producer of the show, Milena Karpuchina. They say time heals all wounds, but that presumes the source of grief is finite. This is a quote from the book Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. And today we're sharing the story of the Porter sisters, of which Alex, the oldest, played by Samantha Proctor, returns to her family's summer home for the first time since her mother's death 17 years ago. Reunited with her sister Olivia, played by Melinda Nanofsky, and her ex-girlfriend Jenna Weaver, played by Georgia Gabriel, she must examine her own thoughts, feelings, and decisions and consider what all she buried when her mother died. Written by Carol Mullen, this is Cicadas. Pittsburgh playwright Carol Mullen has had her work produced in theaters and festivals nationwide. She is a 2021 O'Neill finalist and a 2023 O'Neill semifinalist. Mullen has an MFA in writing for the screen and stage from Point Park University's Conservatory of Performing Arts and is a member of the Dramatists Guild. Make sure to follow Bluebird Theatre Company on social media to keep up with updates on our audio and visual performances. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. You look tired. I'm fine. Honestly. Sometimes when you're tired, not you specifically, anyone, it's easy to get overly emotional. Alex. Your defenses are down. You feel vulnerable. I don't. Maybe even a little... Hysterical? I'm merely trying to find a logical, reasonable explanation for... What? Your state of mind. There's nothing wrong with me. If you think I'm crazy, you shouldn't have come. I don't think you're crazy, Liv. But? Our last conversation concerned me. Oh, for- That's ridiculous to you? Me being worried? It's unnecessary. If someone told you they were going to raise their mother from the dead- That's not what I said. You didn't tell me mom was coming back? I never said I was going to raise her. That's the least important part. No, it's not. If I thought I had the power to bring dead people back to life, you'd have a right to be worried. But the fact that you believe she's going to show up here this weekend shouldn't trouble me? (sighs) Do you want some tea? What? Can you be exacerbated and drink lemon zinger at the same time? I have a pot steeping. Sure. Is that Grandma Phyllis's lamp? Yep. Still works. Okay. I believe you were in the middle of berating me. Can you admit that objectively... We're sisters. You're supposed to give me the benefit of the doubt. I am. By staring at me like you think I'm about to have some kind of fit? That's ridiculous. You haven't been hearing voices, have you? Alex! You're at the right age to start exhibiting signs of schizophrenia. Did you read the articles I sent? Can we... They're from scientific journals. Paranormal science. Written by researchers... From New Zealand. It's a real place. But too far away from everything to fact check. They can write whatever they want because nobody's going to fly 30 hours to authenticate their data. So you didn't. I read the damn articles. Then you know it can happen. The woman in Mexico City in 1938. The guy in Toulon in 1951. Because of the bugs. Cicadas. Which are bugs? Mom's been gone 17 years this weekend. Conditions are optimal. (laughs) Well, she always loved the Memorial Day sales at Macy's, so if that's what you mean by optimal. Cicadas are dormant underground for 17 years before emerging. Dormant. Not dead. Not lying in tiny mahogany caskets that are buried in tiny cement vaults. Her casket was mahogany? Same as the dining room furniture. It sounded nuts when Dad picked it, but it ended up being a good call. My point is... You think this is insane? Why isn't Dad here? He and Mimi are at that couple's Scrabble tournament. In Fort Lauderdale? Last year. This time it's in Cape Coral. He passed up the chance to see Mom so he can sit in an over-air-conditioned Marriott ballroom and spell long words. You didn't tell him. 
No. Because on some level, you know that this is... If she comes back, when, it'll be for us. What if she doesn't want to come back? What? She could be completely content where she is. You don't think she'll want to know how we turned out? I... We were teenagers. So? It was a volatile period of our lives. Lots of self-righteous door slamming. (laughs) You were constantly at each other's throats. Thank God for headphones and in sync. More tea? Yeah. How are things at Cedar Lake Saltwater Taffy Emporium? We added a soft serve machine. Twist cones, big doings. How do you never gain weight? Even Swedish fish and peanut butter fudge lose their appeal when you're around them all day. Have you ever thought of doing something different? I like managing the candy store. Everybody's always smiling there. And you're not bored? I'm good at it. What about a 401k, health insurance? Are you going to spend the whole weekend? I only wonder if you might be happier or less fixated on mom if you... Wait a minute. ...started fresh somewhere. Fixated? Well, what would you call it? You're a 30-year-old woman who thinks her dead mother is coming back to life. Better than acting like she never existed. Oh, please. This is the first time you've been here since she died. It was our summer home. I stopped spending my summers here. What about after I moved in? We always met at your place or dad's. Not everyone is as nostalgic as you are. I'm not... Most people don't want to be constantly reminded of a horrible thing that happened to them. I've made a million good memories here since then. And now you somehow convinced yourself that... You never talk about her. Of course I do. No. Just because I don't. Not even at the beginning. The first birthday? Christmas? Mother's Day? I'm not a wallower. I was so upset. You had four extra years of memories, and you never wanted to share them. I'm sure you remember plenty. Dad and I talked about it. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. He'd tell me it was too painful for you, but that maybe someday you'd... You and Dad talk about her. All the time. Mimi doesn't mind? (laughs) They were married for 23 years. Mimi doesn't expect him to forget that part of his life. That would be insane. It's cold in here. Are you cold? It always was chilly at night. How does this whole... This whole... The thing. How will this happen? Do we need to go to the cemetery or... The article said... The return found their way to their loved ones. Yeah, but (laughs) Mom had a terrible sense of direction, so that could be a problem. I was going to light some candles, maybe burn some sage. We're going to wing it? There aren't step-by-step instructions. Fucking New Zealand. The most important thing is that we open ourselves to the possibility of her return. And then send welcoming energy out into the universe. You're not going to play jazz, are you? I hate jazz. I was hoping we would figure this out together. I suck at this stuff. Communing with the dead? Being open and welcoming. What did you mean earlier? About her not wanting to come back? Nothing. Just nothing. I have a million questions for her. About dying? No. Well, I'll find that out eventually. Then what? Where's the key to the shed? The... I turned this place upside down. Finally had to call a locksmith. It cost me 140 bucks. That's what you want to know. That's not the only thing. She put a secret recipe in her potato salad. I've made her recipe a thousand times and tried everything from celery seed to chopped bacon and it never tastes like hers. (laughs) What about you? I'm good. Oh... Come on. I don't like potato salad, so... You don't have any unresolved issues you'd like her to weigh in on. Such as? Your job. Your love life. The fact that you haven't picked up a sketch pad in almost 20 years. I'm not unresolved about any of that. 
you're happy? Mom wouldn't be my go-to authority on happiness if she was alive. She was happy. Clearly you don't agree. Well, what are we doing, Liv, huh? This is stupid. I passed a cute Mexican restaurant in town. Let me take you out. Tony's Taqueria. They were cited for a half dozen health code violations last month. Pick someplace else then. Whatever you want. I want to wait for mom. Stop it. Okay? Stop. You go. Have dinner at Tomain Tony's. Come with me. What are you afraid of? Get your jacket. What do you think she'll say? Let's go. I'll drive. I told you. She's not coming back, Liv. Okay? Now put on a fucking coat and let's go have a nice dinner. <gasps> I didn't even burn any sage. Are you expecting anyone? Duh. Other than mom. Isn't that enough for one night? What are you doing? Letting her in. Well, can't she just pass through the door? Maybe she's being polite. Hey, Liv. Oh. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Sorry to pop over unannounced. I thought I'd check in with my patient on the way home. Jenna. Hi, Alex. I'll see if I can get Leonard to come out from underneath the bed. Who? Leonard Nimoy. Please tell me that she doesn't believe Leonard Nimoy is... A cat. <laughs> she believes Leonard Nimoy is a cat? He is a cat. A stray she took in a few days ago. I neutered him for her. He's the patient. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. You look great. Oh, thanks. Is that weird? Uh, no. I don't think so. First time I see you in ages and I comment on your appearance? Kind of shallow. Well, you haven't changed at all. I don't know if that's good or... <laughs> it's very good. You here for the long weekend? Yeah. Well, that and because Liv thinks our mom is going to full on Lazarus. The cicadas thing. She told you? We talk. Not every Porter sister blew me off. It was complicated. I... I'm kidding. Right. Liv says you're designing magazines. Catalogs. Like... L.L. Bean, Land's End. Junk mail. I... Sorry, I didn't mean... I guess you could... That was... I'm an idiot. It's fine. You still make me nervous. And you're saving lives. It's a lot of well checks and heartworm pills. But there are occasional heroic moments. Did you make it to Colorado? Oh, good memory. I, I kept your letters for a long time. I had a surgical residency in Fort Collins after school. But I missed it here. Once a townie, always a townie, I guess. Do you, you... Oh, you first. Are you still... Gay? Worried that you were an experiment, or that you put me off women forever? No, <laughs> Still I... gay. It's mostly theoretical at the moment. Haven't been in a relationship in a while. Me neither. I thought... You're not seeing someone? It's not exactly a relationship. I've had a few of those. I didn't mean to flake on you. I should have said something. Or... Hey, your mother died. We were leaving for college. It was a long time ago. I just don't want you to think it didn't mean anything to me. Alex. It did. I appreciate that. I had a good long mope about it and moved on. Excellent. <laughs> I don't usually make house calls. Sorry? In the interest of full disclosure, Liv told me you were going to be here. And you... Thought I'd... Mostly for Leonard Nimoy. But also for old time's sake. When we heard you at the door, we thought... Ooh. Oh, well. <laughs> Not that I, you know, that live. Blame New Zealand. I do. <laughs> so you don't. I came because I'm worried about her. She's fine. Is that your professional opinion? Only if she was a schnauzer. As a... A woman of science... Jeremy Mitchell's a 7th grader. Used to help live out at the candy store. He went blind a year ago, and every week she records all of his reading assignments because he hasn't quite mastered Braille. 
She outsold everybody for the Wise 4th of July raffle, and she's flipped so many flapjacks at the fire department's annual pancake breakfast that the chief calls her short stack. But she's one of the most reliable, respected people in town, and she's fully in control of her faculties. You really do look exactly the same. Mm. Trick of the light. Dim rooms flatter me. He won't come out. No worries. I'll get him. He's under there pretty far. That's why I always carry dried liver. I knew I forgot to pack something. How long has Jenna been back? A little over a year. She took over Dr. Chambers' practice. And you didn't think I might want to know that you and my first real girlfriend were BFFs? You don't like to talk about the past. She's living here now. You don't like to talk about the present, either. We talk all the time. About politics and vegetarian recipes and Grey's Anatomy. Never anything personal. I take Arizona Robbins very personally. <sighs> and speaking of playing it close to the vest, apparently you're the Mother Teresa of Cedar Lake. I am not. Recording textbooks for a blind kid? It's finally getting me to read my English homework from junior high. Who knew George Orwell was such a hoot? You could always go back to school, you know. I hated college. That's why I quit. But... What about you? I finished school. Not art school. That ship has sailed. You're so talented, Alex. The world deserves to see your work. Hundreds of thousands of people see my work every year. Or are you unfamiliar with Patagonia's Winter Circular? The critics said my two-page spread on down vests was brimming with unbridled insouciance. He's good to go. Doesn't even seem to be holding much of a grudge. Behold the power of liver. Guess I'll be heading out. Leave you two to catch up. Would you be willing to visit one more time? Maybe tomorrow? To double check on him? I can do that. Sure. Alex and I will be here all weekend. Just hanging out. No big plans? Well, we'll probably give each other manicures, then break out the Ouija board and chat with relatives. <laughs> Always with the funny. Yeah, she's a laugh riot. See you later, then. I guess so. What was that? I don't... Visit one more time? Maybe tomorrow? We're neighbors! She's being neighborly. It's the benefit of having deep roots in a place. I, I didn't say it was wrong to be part of a community. As long as it's not this one. It's getting late. Don't you have some sage to burn? Really? I'll light the candles while you fire up the herbs. Ooh, that sounds a lot more fun than it's likely to be. You still want to? You ruined my dream of a Somalian tequila dinner, so why not? What's that supposed to do other than set off your smoke alarm? It cleans and purifies. Like Clorox wipes? Spiritual cleansing. I don't have any tequila, but I've got a bottle of Jameson's. Dear God, please. To mom. I always wondered why you'd want to live out here all by yourself. Pitch dark, no noise but the bullfrogs. But it's cozy. You can visit anytime. I know you're humoring me with this, but... I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Whatever you're doing, I appreciate it. You really don't have any questions for her? Nothing you've wondered about? Mm, Mom was very forthcoming with her opinions where I was concerned, so she didn't leave a lot of room for questions. What do you- Pickle juice! That's what she put in the potato salad. That's it! She mixed juice from bread and butter pickles with juice from dill pickles. You're a genius. I forgot she used both. <laughs> I remembered the dill, but... That's why she had to go out to Wegmans that morning. For bread and butter pickles. 
Shit. She was so fucking mad. Get your head out of the clouds, Alex. Stop daydreaming and focus on what's important. If I want something done right, I have to do it myself. And then she just stormed off like a bat out of hell. You don't think? God forbid she could have been satisfied with one kind of juice. <laughs> she didn't mean those things. If I'd been paying more attention to the shopping list instead of obsessing over Jenna or trying to get the shading right on some stupid still life. Mm -mm. It was an accident. It was raining. There was fresh gravel on River Road and she was probably speeding. Because she was furious. Because she always drove too fast. Dad used to call her Mario Andretti, remember? It was not your fault. Right. Don't let one stupid outburst define your entire relationship with her. We fought constantly. You said it yourself. That's how it's supposed to be when you're 17. Otherwise, kids would never leave home. She didn't get on your case. <laughs> I spent all my time with Marielle Hinton talking about how hot James Vanderbeek was. You and Mom actually hung out with each other. You were peas in a pod. Well, not so much at the end. You would have found common ground again. Maybe. I might have even warmed my way into your dynamic duo. She'd be ridiculously proud of you. Yeah? She loved it up here. I think it would have made her really happy that you do too. Maybe I'll ask her. Liv. I know, but it would be amazing. Wouldn't it? If she came back? Even for one night? Yeah. But this has been pretty amazing anyway. When Jenna comes over tomorrow, we can go out on the boat. I'll show you the new amphitheater. Called the wind? City slicker? No! It's something else. It sounds like keys jingling. Can you. I'll be damned. Thanks again for listening to Cicadas by Carol Mullen with Samantha Proctor, Melinda Nanofsky, and Georgia Gabriel. If you enjoyed this Bluebird Broadcast audio production, don't forget to rate the show five stars. This has been Milena Karpuchina with Bluebird Theatre Company, and we'll see you next time with another release of Bluebird Broadcast. <laughs>